Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about how to learn JavaScript step by step. There are a lot of confused people out there and a lot of people ask me every single day on my channel, how do I learn JavaScript? How do I, where do I start? How do I become an expert? So today I'm going to, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make this video where I show you the step by step, the way I learn and the way I know because there's so much bad material out there and a lot of people are confused by it. The trick is actually not to learn everything. The trick is to learn the right thing. And most of us are actually targeting either uh, a node or some JavaScript framework, right? And, f and so I'm going to show you all the steps uh, to become an expert at that. And then I'll show you some of the stuff uh, beyond that where you can actually become an expert. So you can actually navigate through any problem that occurs in JavaScript. And you can actually solve some advanced problem. And I will also show you on the way not what not to learn or what to forget. And if you stick around till the end, I'll show you some of the resources I, uh, I use uh, to learn this stuff. And welcome to Taxi Tutorials. If you want to learn JavaScript, I should suggest learn JavaScript in isolation without using uh, HTML or CSS, at, le at least in the, in the beginning. Okay, learn it as a language. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we'll, we'll, we'll look at the DOM manipulation and whatnot. All right, let's just start with, well, the first thing I wanna learn is types and scope. So I, I, I need to learn how to define a variable. And so the first thing I wanna learn is let and const. Okay, where do you use let, where do you use const? What's the difference between two? Forget about war. Uh, I would say, if you're new, don't, don't uh, learn war because the problem that happens with war you don't want to deal with right so forget about it you want to learn about scope okay how the scope works the block scope okay because you're using let and const you're gonna deal with block scope right so what is a block scope what is a global scope okay how to access things from global scope what is a lexical scope okay when you access something from outside your scope, automatically that's called lexical scope so you need to understand global scope, uh, block scope, and lexics. Okay, now you are ready to move to uh, data types. Okay, there are two data types or two kind of data types in JavaScript. The one is primitive and the second is reference or complex data types. So let's look at the, the first type, the primitive data types, number, string, boolean, undefined and null, and simple. So the first two, undefined and null, they're empty values, when to use it, how exactly they work, why there are two different types, and what is the difference between two. Okay, when you define a variable without assigning a value, what really happened? It's undefined, right? So that's how the empty values are. Then move to numbers, how to define, uh, uh, how to define a number, what's the largest value in, uh, that you can have uh, as a number, what is the largest uh, integer or floating point, what is an infinity, what about the math library, okay? Uh, because you're going to be doing a lot of math operation and uh, even though the numbers are primitive data types you can still use some methods on it uh, how to access it okay if i if i put some number underscore pr underscore underscore pro to underscore underscore mm -hmm. i should be able to see the all the methods i can use the math library has a lot of math functions number library okay number library has a lot of uh, methods you can use so you need to find out where they are what are the functions or methods, and you should be able to try it out a few things. All right, the next thing is strings, okay? Another primitive type. How to define a, uh, an empty string? Um, what's the difference between double code, single code, and a backtick, a template uh, strings, right? Where to use, which to use when? Where are the string methods? If you do a particular string dot underscore underscore pro to underscore underscore, you should be able to see all the string, string methods, and you should be able to use it. Now, I'm not trying to say that, okay, at this point you should know the prototype inheritance, but you should at least know where to find all this method so that you can start using it, right? And then try them out, try them out. Boolean, okay, another uh, primitive data type. And the last uh, a primitive data type is symbol. If you are trying to learn, I would just put, sing, uh, I would not learn symbol at this point. I would just move on to uh, another topic, which is, which is type conversion, okay? Now what is type conversion? I want to convert one primitive data type to another. So string to number, number to string, string to boolean, what? There are a few simple rules that applies when you want to do this. And uh, 
a lot of people are confused. They they try to they try to convert everything to everything, and it, it gets really weird. But there are a few simple rules, okay. And I think there are th three rules that you need to follow, okay. Uh, if you don't if you don't know this rule, ask me, and I'll I'll, I'll tell you. All right. The next topic is operators and statements. So what are the operators? Uh, operators are you know the like equal sign plus sign you know uh, so they are math operators you know plus minus plus plus and all that stuff right uh, then there are comparison operators double equal sign whatever there are logical operators there are binary operators and there are some other operators right so you need to understand all the operators and what they do what about the statements okay you have a for loop uh, while loop um, if statements, all of that, right? So like a lot of basic stuff that you usually use in a programming language. Uh, if you're coming from another programming language, how, how it happens in JavaScript, because there might be some nuances that you don't know. So at least try it out. Now it's time to move on to reference data types. Now we are getting into a little bit complex territory. Uh, what are the, the reference data types? You have objects, arrays, sets, maps, and then some others like typed arrays and all that stuff, right? You should be able to create an empty array uh, using uh, array literal. Uh, do not use constructors to create arrays. That is like old way to do it. How to add things at the end using push. How to remove things from the end using pop. How to add something in the front. How to add, remove something from the front of the array. How to add something to the middle. How to remove something from the middle. How to iterate through that are using uh, for loop, uh, for each loop, for off loop. In the end, you also need to know how to create multi-dimensional arrays. Uh, so array with array. Let's say if you want to create a matrix, you should be able to, you should know how to do it. All right, so the next thing is objects, JavaScript objects. They are the, like the heart of the, the JavaScript. Uh, you need to know how to create an empty object using uh, object literal. Do not use constructors, again. Um, you should be able to add values to it because you know JavaScript objects nothing but key value pairs so you should be able to add a different kind of keys keys without space keys with space and you need to know how to access it uh, how to delete a prop how to modify it how to iterate through it now uh, when you use an object there is a for in loop you can also use for off uh, off loop using object dot keys and object or values um, newly introduced in ES6 how to add methods to object like you can have a methods and those method can access properties of those objects the keys and values right how to use uh, those uh, properties using this dot okay so you need to understand how this works in inside an object you also need to know what is a destructuring okay if I'm trying to access the property of properties of the object and assigned to a variable uh, destructuring is very helpful okay next move to a uh, different data structure maps and sets okay these are the new data structures uh, they were introduced in ES6 okay what are they you need to understand how to use them and all that stuff I have actually a lots of tutorial on it uh, if you want to check it out I'm not gonna provide a link here but you can just go through my channel so now the next topic is functions okay now the real work starts. Now we understand the data structures, now uh, functions. Within the function you wanna, first thing you wanna learn is the function uh, declaration and function expression. In JavaScript you're gonna be using mostly function expression which is like a function store inside a variable. You also need to know what is an anonymous function. What is an immediately invoked function expression, okay? Uh, nowadays we don't use it that much but you need to understand. They need to, you, then you need to know default parameters. How to set default parameters? Yes, it's available in JavaScript now. Uh, spread operators and rest parameters. And since you already know about the, the arrays and object, spread operator will help you create a, co a shallow copy of objects and arrays. And also it allows you to merge uh, two objects or arrays. The next topic is very important, callback functions. You're gonna be using this a lot. I think JavaScript is pretty much all callback functions. Uh, so you need to understand why we use it. Basically it's a function passed into another function and executed at some point of time. It's not that hard. So that's all about the basics of JavaScript. Uh, now we are ready some, some serious work with object-oriented JavaScript. 
Okay, when it comes to object-oriented JavaScript, JavaScript is actually prototypal inheritance. Uh, JavaScript follows prototypal inheritance, not the classical inheritance like Java. Okay, it does have classes, but it's it's kind of like a synthetic sh uh, sugar, actually. So I would suggest learn about the prototype inheritance. What is a prototype? Uh, create a, a, a constructor, even though you're not going to use it much, I would just at least uh, understand how to add uh, properties and methods to, to prototype so you, you can understand it better. And then once you, you don't have to go too deep, uh, as long as you understand the prototype chain, uh, then move to uh, classes, error function, okay? Uh, I kept it for last because you needed to understand function before you, under, before you understand error function. Uh, ultimately, JavaScript is actually a functional programming language, believe it or not. It uses more functional programming than object-oriented. So it's important to understand functional. And I would say the first thing you want to learn in a, uh, in a functional programming is call apply and bind. Then learn about higher order function when you return a function from a function. What really happened? Uh, closures, okay? That's what really happens. Closures are so important, even though you don't use it intentionally, uh, but you need to understand why why they are being used. Uh, function chaining, when you chain the function like x dot y dot z dot, you know, when you chain a function like that. Uh, map, reduce, uh, filters, each and sum. Very important to understand. Curry function, it's again the same principle of higher order function. The next thing you wanna learn is modules. If you learn uh, any new JavaScript framework, you would see this import x, import react from react, right? So these are all modules that you're importing and exporting. All right, we're almost there. So the next thing you want to learn is all the async operations, right? Uh, set timeout, set interval, uh, fetch API. If you, if you are working in a project that is front-end project, most probably you're going to make an API call. And fetch, fetch API is a new, newer way to do it. Then you have to learn promises because if you use fetch API, you're gonna make a few promises, right? Um, and you can also learn async await. But now it's time to actually use HTML and CSS and JavaScript combined. So we need to understand DOM very well. So how to navigate your DOM using JavaScript, um, how to add events uh, to particular ele uh, particular element. Okay, uh, event bubbling and capturing because when you when you click somewhere, some uh, in, in a button, actually the click is actually happened on every single element. So if you have a click event, they would happen. So you need to understand the how event propagates um, and how to stop those events from happening. So I would say that's all you need to become an expert in JavaScript. Uh, and the next step, next step is actually become a master of JavaScript. Uh, how do I become a master of JavaScript? Well, I need to I need to learn some additional topics or I need to go out and actually uh, learn what are the things that are going in, in, in or coming up or changing in JavaScript and I have to constantly work hard to actually keep an eye on all of that. Right? And so I'm going to suggest a few topics, but I mean JavaScript is too vast, um, but I will suggest uh, some of the topics that if you learn, you can actually get into the territory proxies and reflection. Symbols, remember I told you a primitive type. Uh, symbols allows you to create unique values and try uh, JavaScript regex, uh, regular expression. You wanna try recursive JavaScript. Now right now it's a little bit riskier to use recursive uh, operations in JavaScript because it doesn't have the tail optimization, but I think it's coming. So soon we'll be able to use it comfortably. Okay. You can also learn web workers uh, to do, to, so you can delegate some work out to some worker if you have very computational intensive work, eventually you have to do some time. Generators, also very important. Um, they are new addition in JavaScript. If you have used uh, Redux Saga, you probably have seen generators, right? So these are all the, all the good topics to actually become a uh, master in JavaScript, should I say. Okay, now let's look at some of the resources that I usually... One of my favorite author is uh, Dr. Alex Roshmeyer. He has a website called exploringjs.com and I often watch that and he actually has a lot of topics on upcoming JavaScript. And also look at the uh, 
evolution of JavaScript. Uh, there's this great GitHub project that actually keeps track of all the features that are uh, coming in JavaScript, the next feature, the proposal and all that stuff. I'll provide a link here. I usually watch out for them as well. And by the way, a lot of topics I, that I mentioned here, I already have lots of tutorial on web, web workers to uh, generators to promises and all that stuff. Go ahead and check it out. I don't want to provide all these links here because I think YouTube only pro uh, allows you to do a couple. But since you have access to my channel, you should be able to navigate through it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask me if, if you are con confused with a particular topic or path. And I hope you learned something from this video. And if you did, please like. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment.